The Bleach Verse is a very big and complex one. It involves multiple realms of existence with many systems within themselves. The Soul Society is where you can find Soul Reapers and their squads, normal souls and the Rukongai. The world of the living is the plane of the living. By far the most interesting place in this realm is Karakura Town. Full bringers, Quincy's, Soul Reapers, Hollows, and even regular souls can all be found in Karakura Town, as it is the place that has the biggest concentration of spiritual activity in this realm. Then you have what's considered the opposite of the Soul Society, and that exists between the realm of the living and the Soul Society, Waco Mundo. As the name suggests, it's where you'll find all sorts of hollows. And at one point in time, you could find Sosuke Aizen and his Espada army residing in Las Noches, a fortress in Waco Mundo. In between the Soul Society, you have all sorts of craziness like the Precipice World. Somewhere in the mix is the realm of hell, by far one of the coolest realms to ever be introduced into Bleach lore. And I feel like I speak for most Bleach fans when I say that it's also one of the biggest wasted potentials of the series. It was introduced all the way back in chapter 12 of Bleach. Outside of its introduction though, Hell was not really touched on anymore. We continued with the main realms of Bleach, which is understandable because the main conflict took place in those realms. We didn't get much action in relation to Hell, but eventually we got the Hellverse movie and everything that came with it. What is the Hellverse movie and what else did it bring besides the movie itself? The movie itself reinvigorated the fanbase's interest in the realm. Now we have some sort of content that we can use when talking about hell and we even got a look at into what hell really is the movie also brought its promotional material most notably an entire episode in the anime and a chapter in the manga now this movie is getting revisited by many fans because of the latest bleach chapter just like i'm about to do many fans have looked into what kind of connections we can find between the movie and the latest chapter let's talk about the movie itself for a minute what is it about spoiler warning for those of you that haven't seen this movie yet if you haven't you really should it's a fan favorite but if you have or you have it and just don't care here goes my very condensed summary i'll go into all the details later in this video and in separate future videos but anyways let's go the movie starts with the world renowned ichigo versus ukiora fight it's a lot shorter than the actual fight but the animation of this version is top notch if you're around in the anime community you've probably seen gifs or even videos of this going around occasionally as this fight goes on a mysterious man is reborn in the lowest level of hell something has observed what has transpired in ichigo's fight and took interest in it. For what reason? Well, the answer to that question is what this movie is all about. The movie centers around hell and its sinners. The sinners are the residents of hell. If you recall, those that have done diabolical things, called sins in the series, are cast into hell once they're cleansed as souls. Remember Shrieker, the one who fought Chad and Rukia all those episodes ago? These sinners have been concocting some plans, some ways to escape hell. Their golden opportunity finally arises when Ichigo showcases his power against Ukiora. In an attempt to destroy the gates of hell for the sole purpose of escaping hell, Shurin and the sinners lure Ichigo and the gang by kidnapping Yuzu. Unbeknownst to Ichigo, his friends, and the sinners, they're pawns in one big game, as the puppet master puts it himself. Pawns of Kokuto. Kokuto was the observer in the beginning of the movie, the guy being reborn. He witnessed hollow Ichigo obliterate Ukiora and deems that this is the power that is going to set him free. He makes a hypothesis. While Shurin and the other sinners believe that the actual gate itself is keeping them in hell, Kokuto believes with certainty that it's actually the chains that bind them there. You see, Kokuto works smarter, not harder. So he lets Shuren and the sinners believe that the only way of escaping is by destroying the gates. And the only one that can actually do that is Ichigo. With this false knowledge, Shuren and the sinners set out to the world of the living. Shuren and the sinners themselves can't defeat Ichigo, and they can't kill him because that defeats the whole purpose. So they kidnap Yuzu and attempt to kidnap Cardin as well, but they are unsuccessful. With the assistance of Kokuto, Ichigo and friends delve into the different layers of hell in order to rescue Yuzu. Every layer presented its own challenge. The guardians of hell notice the intrusion and chase them through level 1. In level 2, the sinners make their return to fight. Ichigo and Kokuto continue to the third level after briefly fighting the sinners. Renji, Uryu, and Rukia are locked in combat at the second level. Taikon fights Uryu, Rukia fights Gunjo, and Renji fights Garugai. They're not at the second level for long because they all eventually end up in level 3 during their fights. Renji, Rukia, and Uryu are successful in defeating the sinners, but not for long. Ichigo and Kokuto finally get to the fourth level of hell. This is the level where they finally encounter Shurin and Yuzu. As Shurin states, it is impossible for sinners to die permanently, so the previously defeated sinners are resurrected. Garogai, Gunjo, Taikon, and Shurin team against Ichigo and Kokuto. Kokuto takes out Garogai, Gunjo, and Taikon, but not before sacrificing himself to save Yuzu from a firebolt shot by Shurin. It is now Ichigo versus Shurin. Like a lot of Ichigo fights, he struggles at first, but easily 
easily takes him out once he dons the hollow mask. Ichigo was just too fast for Shuren and took him out with a point blank Getsuga Tensho. As Ichigo goes to grab Yuzu and take her home, he is stabbed by Kokuto's sword. Kokuto at this point reveals that he has been behind everything all along. He says that he informed the sinners of Ichigo and his capabilities and let them do all the heavy lifting. All Kokuto had to do was provoke Ichigo and make the hollow come out so he can be freed. He reveals to Ichigo that Yuzu is no longer living and points out the fact that her chain of fate has started forming. He then proceeds to drop her into a pool of lava below. Enraged, Ichigo saves Yuzu and turns into his hollow self, his full hollow self. Ichigo fires off Seros in order to kill Kokuto and this achieves nothing but an undesired effect. By hollifying and firing Seros at Kokuto, Ichigo is inadvertently destroying the chains that bind Kokuto to hell. This was the plan all along. Luckily, Renji was there to stop his last Sero and cast a special Kido on Ichigo, sending Yuzu and him back home. Back in the world of the living, an effort is made to revive Yuzu. Even Orihime's rejection abilities don't work. Thankfully, her chain of fate later disintegrates and Orihime is able to help her make a recovery. Ichigo, with feelings of guilt and sorrow, goes back to hell to rescue Rukio, Uryu, and Renji. He quickly makes it to the last level in hell and encounters Kokuto once more. Kokuto states that he was actually debating on if he should go back into the world of the living and get Ichigo, but he's glad that Ichigo returned himself. Ichigo and Kokuto fight, this time Ichigo restrains himself to prevent another full holification. Ichigo struggles a bit and Kokuto tells him that it's going to be impossible to defeat him without holifying, fully holifying. At this point, Ichigo is already struggling to stay normal, but once Kokuto reveals that Rukia has already become a sinner and begins to brutally beat him, his hollow begins to take over. And as if things weren't bad enough, multiple guardians arrive due to the spiritual pressure change in Ichigo. In reality, the guardians have lended Ichigo their strength and Ichigo gains a new form. He is now skull clad. Ichigo and Kokuto exchange some words before Ichigo finally defeats Kokuto. As I said earlier, this summary is very condensed and missed some details or explanations in some certain areas, but that should be enough for you to get the gist of this movie. What I really want to talk about are the things that this movie introduced that we didn't have before. First of all, Sinners. Well, we obviously had Sinners in Bleach, just not by name. And we didn't know what really happened in Hell up to this point, so we didn't know that those cast into Hell could team up and develop abilities unique to them. Take a look at the Sinners from this movie. Shuren seems to be able to manifest shape and use flames how he pleases. Tycon can absorb energy from attacks and use it against his enemies. Garogai has incredible strength and can detach his arms and use them in a variety of ways. Gunjo has tentacles that he can use to grab and pale or use as a blunt weapon in fights. And what about the levels of hell? This concept has been on everyone's mind the moment it was introduced in this movie. Even before that, people would theorize on this concept, bringing in Abrahamic religions from real life as an inspiration. This movie showed us that there are at least five levels of hell. Each of them have their own little quirks. From an inverted ocean world with acid pools to a lava filled landscape. It was definitely a treat for sure and I'm hoping that if nothing is transferred over to the new hell arc, this be the one thing that does. I hope we get more levels and some exploration of the existing ones. Hell seems to make some people more volatile and prone to different things. Ichigo for example had a hard time keeping himself stable during his stay in hell. His hollow mask kept manifesting on its own and he even fully holified once, almost fully holifying again for a second time on his return. Not only did these actions put his friends in danger on multiple occasions but it also destroyed the gates of hell. I'm curious to see how this works out now that Ichigo is more in line or more in tune with his abilities. Normal humans can't withstand hell's atmosphere for long. Yuzu was captured and held in captivity for some time and developed her chain of fate as a result. Speaking of dying in hell, once you die in hell, you become a sinner, regardless if you committed sins in your living days or not. This is pretty interesting because at least in the movie, hell is reserved for only the wicked, those that have actually committed sins. But with this movie and with the latest chapter, we know that hell isn't just about right and wrong. In the movie, Kokuto kills Rukia and a short while after she's reborn through lava just like how Shuren and the other sinners were reborn. Rukia also developed a chain of fate. I hope this is another thing that they decide to bring into the new arc from the movie. It would make the arc a bit more dicey and critical. As it stands in canon now, the only way for someone to be condemned to hell is by committing vile acts during your time alive or by having dense reishi as a soul reaper and having the Konzo Resai ritual performed in your name. Another interesting fact is that soul reapers do not control hell. No one does for that matter. The only semblance of order in hell is maintained by the guardian of hell. Even then, they contribute to the chaos more than they keep things in order. They prevent sinners from escaping hell and are responsible for bringing in new sinners. When Kokuto almost escaped hell, the guardians recognized that 
the only way to keep him in hell was to grant Ichigo the powers of hell and make him skull clad. So they maintain a system in that way, but they also promote chaos by actively chasing and consuming sinners, keeping them locked in a perpetual cycle of death and life. And I don't know about you guys, but these things are absolutely terrifying in my opinion. Not only do they look creepy, but they can actually phase through anything and even stronger sinners like Kokuto are helpless against them. Just imagine one of these things towering over you before you get crushed and eaten. But like I said earlier, this movie brought some other content that wasn't just a movie. To promote this movie, Taite Kubo, the creator of Bleach, made a chapter dedicated to Hellverse. So technically, No Breaths from Hell wasn't the first Hell chapter. This chapter introduced us to Shuren and the sinners that we see in the movie. It also shows us that Xyloporo and Arinero end up in hell after cleansing. Both are easily defeated by Shuren and the Sinners. This entire chapter is adapted into the Bleach anime episode 299, though the anime did add some extra things like the Shrieker returning to the world of the living to fight Rukia, among other things. By the way, the chapter was only released a day before the anime version of it, no doubt to make the marketing as effective as possible. As I was watching the movie, I did some comparing and contrasting to the latest chapter of Bleach. I did this in an attempt to justify why this movie would be canon, but it brought more questions than answers in that department. In the movie, Uryu was the only one able to sense the presence of something. A few moments later, everyone felt the Ryatsu of the Sinners. The intense spiritual pressure of the Sinners is detected not only by Ichigo and the gang, but by Renji and Rukia who are far from Karakura High School. In the new chapter, the Soul Reapers actually confuse them as hollows hiding their spiritual pressure somehow. It could be that the beasts at the beginning of No Breaths from Hell were concealing their presence or the beasts of hell aren't the same thing as sinners, we don't really know. Xyloporo wasn't called a sinner when he made his appearance in the new chapter. This is probably because everything happened so fast, but regardless, it begged the question. The beasts of hell don't seem to be capable of speech or comprehension like the sinners are, and they're more akin to hollows. If it wasn't for the fact that they actually came from hell, I would have assumed that they were just hollows. I believe that these beasts of hell were once hollows that somehow kept their appearance like Xyloporo. As you can see, they all have rings coming out of their bodies just like Xyloporo had here. Because of Kubo's involvement and the similarities and differences between this new chapter, the old chapter, the movie, and the episode, the canonicity of this movie was and probably still is a point of contention in the Bleach community. Many people consider it to be canon because Kubo, the creator of Bleach, made a special chapter for this movie and the fact that he oversaw the creation of the movie itself. While this is all true, Kubo's chapter special wasn't adapted into the movie but to the episode, which wasn't all that faithful to the chapter anyway. It's also true that Kubo was directly involved in the creation of the Hellverse movie, but he was only involved in certain aspects of the movie, not the entire thing. What logical conclusion can we get from this? The chapter and the episode are purely promotional pieces for the movie, nothing more. This is challenged once again however due to the release of the latest Bleach chapter, No Breaths From Hell, where Xyloporo was in fact cast into hell just like how he was in the promotional chapter all those years ago. Those from hell can't be killed off permanently either, just like in the movie. I want to point out that all of this does not make the movie and its promotional material canon. It just simply means that Xyloporo was a bad person as his time alive as a human, and we knew this from the light novels. Seeing him in hell does not mean that this movie, episode, and promotional chapter are canon. At least not yet anyway. We also didn't see Arinero in the latest chapter, despite being cast into hell in the promotional chapter. Like I said, it doesn't mean much, but it'll be interesting to see what will be considered canon from this point forward. It could be selective, or maybe it'll never be canon, ever. I personally would love for at least some of the things to be considered canon, like the levels of hell and the sinner stuff. As for the movie itself, I believe it to be one of the better Bleach movies, to be honest. In my opinion, there are three reasons this movie is such a fan favorite, and they are also my top three reasons why this movie movie is one of my favorites as well. Number one, the animation. How could it not be? You sit down, go to Netflix, see Bleach Hellverse the movie, and the first thing you are greeted by apart from the studio stuff is the holy reanimation of one of the biggest and most popular moments in Bleach history, Ichigo vs Ukiora. No wonder this movie is a fan favorite. The reanimated Ichigo vs Ukiora fight really gave this movie the hook it needed to reach the level of fame that it did. Number two, the concept of hell. Like I previously stated, fans were left wanting more of hell. Hell. People would speculate when it would show up again. When the manga ended its original run, people were left dissatisfied because Hell was never to be seen again. Hell was brought up again in the light novels, but only in reference to. We didn't actually go into Hell. No wonder this movie 
is treated the way it is by Bleach fans. Hell is rare, it's premium. We don't get it often, and when we do, we are left wondering. It's mysterious, even to this day. All of that could be changing soon. Number 3. Full Hollow Ichigo and the mayhem that he caused. One of the reasons Ichigo vs Ukiyora was considered to be one of the best moments in Bleach was because of Ichigo's rage transformation and the chaos that ensued. We never see it to that extent ever again until the Hellverse movie. We actually don't see it at all after the Ichigo vs Ukiyora fight. The fact that he destroyed the gates of hell while fully holified is used all the time in the power scaling community. Now I'm not one for power scaling, I'm not big on that, but I still had goosebumps seeing how powerful Ichigo Sero was while in hell. It broke the gates of hell, but just look at those clouds of fire as they rise to the uppermost level of hell and into the world of the living. Now that hell is back and it's looking like Ichigo could be facing a trip back down, who knows? If this concept gets carried over to the manga, how would that work out now that Ichigo was more in step with his inner self? Only time will tell. What did you think about this movie? Again, it's one of my favorites. If I had to give it a rating out of 10, it would definitely be somewhere in the 8 to 9 range. Of course, with every piece of media, there is room for improvement and it's rare that something is a 10 out of 10. With a few tweaks, I truly believe this movie could have been one of the best anime movies out there. But anyways guys, that is it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and also comment your thoughts down below. And if you did like this video, consider subscribing to the channel. I do plenty of content just like this all over my channel. So if you're into that sort of thing, go ahead and check it out. But anyways guys, that is it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and I'm out y'all. Peace.